everyone welcome back to another lesson in this Tracentis test automation playlist now we have already seen how we can use a configuration parameter to make our tests more dynamic in nature where the values are not static but they are dynamic and they can be changed using these parameters now let's take one step further and let's see how we can use some other kinds of parameters because this was a configuration parameter which you used in your test case. But now we will see how we can use a steering parameter. Okay, so for this, uh, we are going to look at this particular example of uh, the Swag Labs demo website where uh, we have got different usernames and password for different scenarios. Now, one of the scenarios is uh, using this username, which is a performance glitch user. Okay, so what it does is when I use this performance glitch user to sign in, it usually takes a longer time to come to the products page. Okay, so there is a wait time before the product page appears and all the elements within that page appears. So if I click on login now, you will see that it will take some time to log in into this particular website. Okay, because of that particular username. Now this kind of synchronization issues, which could be due to some performance issue in your website, could be resolved uh, using two ways. So either you can use a wait method in your tests so that your test uh, can wait for that amount of time. This is a static way of waiting. Otherwise you can use more dynamic ways of waiting for your elements to be loaded on the page. And that's where you can use uh, one of the steering parameter okay, which is synchronization timeout on wait on. Okay, so this wait on uh, method is more dynamic in nature because it will only wait for the period until all the elements are or a single control is loaded on the page rather than waiting for a fixed amount of time. Okay, so uh, let's go to our test cases section in Trust and Test, test Automation. Uh, now I have developed a sample test case for this particular scenario. Okay, so it's just opening the browser URL, which we have already seen how we can open it using one of the predefined actions. And then um, I am also using a module which I have scanned for the Swag Labs website, where I have entered the user uh, name as performance glitch user, password I have entered here, and then I'm clicking on the login button. Now for the next steps, okay, uh, what I want to do in this product speech is I want to verify whether this uh, particular filter is displayed or not, okay? So I'm going to wait for this particular element to appear before I move ahead with my automation script. Now I can use any particular element here, okay? So the idea is to wait for this page to get loaded. And I can use this add to cart or this product or this filter or this cart option. Any of these elements can be used to wait for that element so that we are sure that our application and our script both are synchronized, right? So uh, for this, uh, I have already scanned a module uh, and that's the products page. Okay, I'm going to drag this right here. And you can see here, uh, this is the select uh, element. And what I want to do is I want to verify. Okay, so I'm going to choose the verify action and then I'm going to say um, exists and the value will be true, right? Now, as I said, there are two ways of uh, doing this, right? Now, if I run this test case like as it is, okay, uh, it might pass or it might fail. Now, it depends uh, because this particular verification, as you can see here, it will be verifying the step for a predefined time or until it is successful, right? So it will use some predefined time, which is in the settings. And that could be 10 seconds, uh, but if the page is taking more than 10 seconds, then it will fail, right? And to overcome this problem, as I said, there are two options. So one, uh, you can use one of the wait method in the predefined actions. So I can drag uh, my wait method here, right? And then I can give uh, some wait time here, like 30,000. 
right? 30,000 milliseconds, uh, but this is now a static wait. Okay, so if I execute this script, it's always going to wait for 30,000 milliseconds, even though the page is getting loaded in maybe 10,000 milliseconds, right? Or sometimes it is taking 20,000 milliseconds, depending on the performance of the website. This particular test case is going to always execute for this amount of time. And that is not a good way of uh, actually designing your test case because that will uh, overall increase the execution time. If you have got lots of test cases which, which are using these static weights, then it is going to increase your wait time, right? Now, instead of this, uh, what we can do, let's delete this. Okay, so instead of this, uh, we can go to the parameters tab and here uh, click on add parameters. Now we are going to add a new parameter. And as I said, it's a steering parameter. So here we are going to use this particular steering parameter, which is called the synchronization timeout during wait on. And then we will also put some default value, which is the maximum wait time for this particular parameter. Okay, so I'm going to use uh, 20,000 milliseconds in this case and that's the maximum wait time, okay? So if uh, the control gets loaded before this, then um, it will not wait for this amount of time, okay? So it's dynamic in nature. Let's go ahead and save this. Uh, we don't need to make any changes uh, on our test steps, okay? So it will automatically use that particular wait on time whenever a control is not loaded on the page, okay? So let's go ahead and run this now. So I have clicked on the run privately and the execution will start in the background. Now, as you can see, it is opening the source demo website. It's going to enter the username, the password. It's going to click on the login button. And then it is going to wait for that filter element dynamically, right? Using the steering parameter, which we have defined where the maximum wait out time is 30 milliseconds or 30,000 milliseconds. And if it loads before that, then it's going to complete the test case uh, without waiting for that 30,000 milliseconds, right? So it's a dynamic way of waiting for any control on your application. Now, as you can see, uh, our test was completed. And in the logs, we can see that our agent is idle right now. Okay, so let's go back to our test case here. And then uh, let's go back to view last run. Okay, so you can see the status is succeeded. Uh, we'll click on this to look at the logs. And here, uh, some interesting things in the log is you can see it is setting the variable, synchronization timeout during wait on. Uh, the value has been set to 20,000 milliseconds. Then after uh, executing all the steps, uh, on the browser, like opening the URL, username, password, clicking on login. Uh, it is now verifying this particular step, right? Which is the select dropdown. Uh, and then the verification was successful, but it also used uh, the timeout, which we have defined internally, okay? Now, no matter how much time it took to wait. So right here, you can see it just took six seconds to load this particular element, right? If it would have taken uh, more than 20 seconds, then the step would have failed, okay? Because the maximum timeout was set to 20 seconds. So this is how, uh, if you have got some controls or your application itself is not responding or not synchronized with your script and your script continuously fails to identify elements because of, these wait times, then uh, you can use the steering parameter, which can act as a dynamic wait method instead of using static wait methods in our test steps. That's all for this particular video. If you have any questions, then please leave it in the comments. If you like this video, then please subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.